Hello everyone, we're back with Santiago Osorio, the manager of transportation training. All good kids love milk. That's what you teach your drivers? What does it mean? <laughs> it has nothing to do with all good kids love milk, right? Okay. It's an acronym that we actually teach them how, so they can remember a, uh, the Smith system. The five keys of the Smith system is something that we teach here at Houston Metro so they can be a safer drivers. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, something that even yourself can practice. Okay. It can take you from point A to point B safely. So what does it mean? That means aim high in steering. Okay. Get the get the big picture. Okay. Keep your eyes moving. Leave yourself a way out, and make sure they see you. Okay. Very that's, good. That, that, that. So that's what, how we put it together. Now, what does aim high in steering mean? Let's get looking. Look up. ahead. Yeah, don't look just ahead. look down all the that's time. That's right. Look and ahead. definitely don't text while you're driving. <laughs> oh, no. Now Metro has a very strict cell phone policy for drivers. That's correct. Which is what. You can't use it at all. That's it. That's Zero it. tolerance. Zero tolerance. If you're caught texting or using your cell phone you automatically while you're, for texting. you're terminated, fired. If you get caught uh, talking on the cell phone while you're in control of a vehicle, then you get suspended for 30 days on your first offense, and on the second offense, you'll be terminated. Okay. What are the biggest challenges you face as manager of training? One of the biggest challenges is when we have a massive training that we have to roll out to the facilities. Uh, is basically coordinating the schedule with the facilities. Mm -hmm. Not because they don't want to help you, it's because we have to train th close to 1,600 operators. Right. So think about this. We have almost a 24-hour service. We don't have 24-hour right. service. But we have operators that work late, mm -hmm. weekends, mm -hmm. and they have all kinds of different schedules. So this, the scheduling the operators for training is one of the most challenging phases of our training. Because if you pull them out of service to train them, there goes your bus service. You have to keep that continuous, right? That's correct. So how do you do it? Oh, we have to be creative. <laughs> it's, a, it's a team effort. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to coordinate with the facilities, superintendents, maintenance come in place because sometimes we need equipment for that. So they all are an integral part of the training phase, and it's challenging. Do you have software that helps you... Um, no. Orchestrate this? No, we just have to do I bet there's something it. out there like that. <laughs> <laughs> it probably is. Oh, yeah, for transportation, is, spreadsheet. <laughs> for transportation, it's a little different okay. because sometimes individuals go out sick. So right. we have to make sure that we, you know, keep in track of who's out sick, who's out on vacation, and who's basically working late. And uh, we have a percentage. Now we have sort of a handle on, on how mm -hmm. we roll out trainings mm -hmm. like this. We recently have one that we call the safety intersection training and okay. awareness. Uh -huh. Yeah, so that. That's one of the biggest challenges we have. The material itself is easy because I have a group of great guys. It's eight instructors that I have that they are so passionate about what they teach. That's not a difficult task. Santiago, in addition to teaching drivers the technical skills of, of driving and also the safety aspect, there, you also teach them customer service because they are the faces and voices of Metro, the first person someone sees who walks on the bus, right? That's correct. And in cases, they are the only one, the only representative of Metro that they see. So we're teaching really good skills as far as how to deal with customers that are either upset because the service is not there, because okay. some of them just want to pay the fare, okay. and some of them are just upset because of the, you know they're just mad. And the group, how do we call them? Grumpy? Right. You know, yes. Grumpy passengers. That's but we it. love all our passengers, whether they're Definitely grumpy or do. not. And that's one of the things we teach them, okay. how to be patient with them. Uh, but certainly, we don't take any abuse from the customers. Mm -hmm. We have a way to report all these issues also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we, we give them skills, and we, they go through a comprehensive training. So what is the one key factor you teach drivers on how to diffuse tension? Listen to them. Sometimes, just by giving them the proper answer, you sometimes you diffuse the situation. Or I'm going to give you an example. If you get on the bus, and you're upset about something, mm -hmm. and you get into an argument, uh, not an argument, but you start getting... Well, an argument, let's right, put it like that. Right. And as you're getting off the bus, I tell you, have a nice day. What is that thing that you, how do you think the customer is probably going to feel? Probably going to think that I'm sarcastic. Right. So one of the techniques that we teach him is like, you know, just don't say anything, anything at all if you don't have to say anything. That okay. way, the person have a good day and they're probably going to respect you more for being professional than, you know, a couple of days later filing a complaint for you being a smarty. Right. <laughs> so it must be hard. Does it take a certain personality for a driver to deal with all these different types of customers? You have to love dealing with customers. And I'll say this because even 70, I mean, not seven years, during my seven years standing when I drove a bus, you have to really enjoy it. And you have to be patient. Now, you used to drive a school bus, is that I right? I drove a school buses, and then after that, I, I, I grew up, obviously. I turned 21, and I said, you know what? I want to take the bigger challenge, mm -hmm. and I want to drive a Metro bus. Mm -hmm. And then I went to the real world where customers don't have to listen to you like the right. kids do. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, so what did you learn in your years of driving the bus that you would teach other people who want to be a driver? You have to be patient, obviously. You have to listen to them. You know, know your, know your job. That's one thing that I always tell them. You are a walking information center. Mm -hmm. Basically, they wanna, they, when they see a metro operator or they see us with a badge, they want to know where a route stops mm -hmm. or how frequent they ride. Mm -hmm. So get as much information as you can because sometimes that can turn a customer around okay. and we can get a returning customer to our service. Now, we have hybrid buses in our fleet. Do you have a favorite bus? Yes. Which one? 40 footer, the low flyer. That's the, that's the one I drove. The new flyer? The new flyer, yes. Okay. That's the one. I, it's a low floor new flyer. That's correct. Do you have to give specialized training for the hybrids? Uh, we go, we take him to, when, whenever we have new equipment, we take him to a comprehensive training so they can get familiar with some of the new features that we have. Some of these new buses have new cameras, mm -hmm. so we have to kind of walk him through and see how they can use it effectively. Uh, some of them are real fast as far as the takeoff, so we have to get him accustomed to that. Okay, very good. Santiago, thank you for being with us and telling us all about the training program for bus drivers at Metro. Thank you. That's all for this edition of Metro Matters. Until next time, stay connected on our blog at ridemetro.org, fan us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. I'm Mary Sitt. Thanks for joining us.